Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Praxis Guild. So glad you tuned into this video. This video is all about numeracy. What is it? Where do we experience it? And how do we get better at it? So stay tuned. All right, everybody. So welcome back to another episode of Praxis Guild. And here we are talking about numeracy in the Essential Skills series. And so we want to ask the question, really, what is numeracy? And when we get into a definition of numeracy, it's it's more than just mathematics. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. But it's more than just mathematics. It's also how we use mathematics, but more importantly, how we think about mathematics and how we apply it. And so if you're kind of like me, uh, when I was going to school, I was really afraid of the hard sciences, math, science, biology, physics, chemistry. Um, and, I, and because of that fear, I really didn't do a really good job with it. And I'm... And I didn't do a really good job with it. And I'm not surprised if many of you are in that same boat. In fact, when we were in high school, we were probably told that if we're not good in the hard sciences, well, then we should think about a life in the trades. But then we get into the trades and we figure out that 80% of what we do in the trades is math and science related. So, you know, you never really can escape it. It's just a more uh, applicable way of using it, but you can never really escape it. And so we get into the trades thinking <laughs> we've got it and we smack dab right into it and sometimes deeper than we thought. And so we run into situations where people should tell us, well, you should be good at math because you're a tradesperson. You should be good at this. You should be good at that. And you should be doing this, that, and the other thing. And that's just simply not true. There are some of us who are really good at math and some of us who aren't so good at math. Uh, and if you're like me, who I'm not really that good at math, I just have to work hard at it, uh, then you tend to put in more hours and more time uh, into figuring out how to understand math and how to apply it. And so because we don't have a good grip on it and we don't know how to use it necessarily, we kind of feel locked out and we feel like we may not have a part of certain aspects of society or society may in turn lock the gate on us and say, oh yeah, but you're just a tradesperson. Um, you know, you really shouldn't be in this area or this arena at all. And so there's there's a lot of uh, bias and there's a lot of dis, uh, a lot of um, there's a, there's a lot of uh, stereotyping that goes around, and uh, it's not healthy either way. And so we begin to feel like we're locked out. And so uh, today's episode, I really want to work on giving you the keys to unlock these locks and become better at numeracy. And so why is it so important? Numeracy is massively important because it affects every aspect of our life. It doesn't just apply to the trades. It applies to life. It applies to our money. It applies to our time. It applies to our calendar and our scheduling. Uh, it applies to knowing uh, how far we can go in a certain amount of gas or, or all these things that, that come into our life that maybe we take for granted and maybe we don't understand or don't recognize that there's math involved in it. Uh, it's all around us and we can't escape it. So it's it's, it's vitally important, not just for our trade and our background and our craft, uh, but it's also important for life. And so somebody said this about numeracy. They said that uh, a numerate person or someone who's good at numeracy has the ability, the awareness, the confidence to know how and when to apply the quantitative and special understandings in their environment. So when they have a better grasp on numeracy, and we're not talking mastery at any degree, we're just talking about a level of uh, usability and, 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 and a comfort level with it, that when you begin to get better at it, your, your confidence actually grows. And when your confidence grows, you're more inclined to learn more about your trade or learn more technology that's infiltrating your trade or changing your trade, making huge leaps in the technology uh, of what we do. And so numeracy is massively important for, for what we do, not only in our life, but in our trade. And I hope I've able to, uh, in this very short time, make that plain to you. So there's three aspects of numeracy that most people talk about. One is mathematics, and that's a bit of a no-brainer. We understand that numeracy has a lot to do with mathematics. It's not just mathematics. There's some science. There's geometry. There's trigonometry involved in this. But at its core level, we have mathematics. The next one is the situation 
situation that you're in and how you're going to apply those theories in the situation that you're in. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit later about concepts. So when you're understanding the situation that you're in, you're able to uh, apply a concept that much easier. But those two things by themselves do not make numeracy um, easy to apply or even fun to learn. There has to be a level of willingness to get involved. And if you're somebody like me, again, who really struggled with some levels of math, uh, the willingness sometimes isn't always there. But again, I think we will become more willing as we become more confident. And as we be, as we apply these principles, we can get to the confidence level and begin really applying a willingness. And then when those three are put together, um, that's when we really start to see the, uh, the importance and the magic behind numeracy. And so when we're talking about calculating awareness in numeracy, we're talking about things like very specific to trades and sometimes even to our life, but we're talking about shipping quantities or ordering quantities. So you, you, you make an order or you receive an order and then you're checking it off. You're managing numbers on the fly. So figuring out uh, different things about your job or figuring out different things about the job site or even th figuring things out about your, your, your lab or your equipment. Um, you're changing the values in those things. So you're trying transposing from one to another, maybe going from eighths to a quarters, or maybe going from quarters to sixteenths, or maybe even going from a fraction of an inch to a decimal of an inch. So you're changing values there. Another part of calculating or awareness is this idea of estimating, knowing uh, the value <clears throat> of what it means to do a particular job. And so for some of us who've done side jobs, this estimating thing has come back to, to haunt us quite a bit because more often than not, we haven't estimated for enough. And so that calculating awareness and that numeracy helps us in doing that. There's also statistics when we begin looking at uh, the analytics of what we're doing, how much time does it take to put so much pipe in or how much time does it take to, to do a break job or how much time does it take to dig that trench? Those are some statistics that come into numeracy as well. And then there's a spatial information. And this is one thing that I've always been amazed of with certain people is that they just have this innate ability to look at a space and figure out how much can fit into it. Uh, I would I would kind of put the people who are good at Tetris in this, <laughs> in this category where they're able to just that they can see a space and they can see what goes in it and they're able to calculate uh, whether it goes in or not. And so numeracy is is in everyday life. It's in everyday life. You can't escape it. Uh, it's all around us. Uh, whether you recognize it or not, uh, it's there. But it has a broader impact than just, like I said earlier, than just our trade. Numeracy is also about literacy. Okay, numeracy is about literacy because numeracy is like that key that unlocks a whole vast array of different things that we can do, not just in our craft, not just getting better at what we do, but also better at life, better at managing our finances, uh, better at managing our home, better in managing our car, working our schedules uh, with all our kids stuff and our, and our significant other stuff going on or our extracurricular activities. All these things affect us. And so when we begin to grow in our, in our understanding and application of numeracy, it really begins to open up a whole area of literacy for us that we may not have recognized, may not have realized. And when that door does crack open, you'll be surprised at how good you feel about understanding a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. And so it begs to ask the question, how can I get better at this skill? If it's so important, Tim, if what you're telling me is so important for my life and for my trade or for my background or even for my business, how do I get better at it? Well, it's going to take some digging in. It's going to take some effort. And you're probably going to have to put in uh, some hours after work into the night uh, to get the ball rolling. But it's always hardest to get the momentum started. Once you have momentum, it's easier to carry it along. And so I want to offer to you this little uh, principle that I've come up with, and it's what I call the five by five. So five things, and then we're going to look at another five things to help us get better at this skill. And I'll unpack that a tiny bit as we go. So in the first one, in the first set of five, I want us to focus on concepts. 
Okay. Don't worry about the nitty gritty details. I want you to focus on concepts. So in retrospect, when we're looking at a word problem or you're looking at uh, a mathematical problem, what's the concept that we're trying to apply in that problem? The second one is go back and review those concepts because questions will always change. And especially when we're looking at exams in our trade uh, life, or we're looking at application situations uh, in our, in our job experiences, those things will change. No one site will be the same. No one question on an exam will be the same. But if you understand the concept, then you'll be able to apply it in almost any situation. So reviewing the concepts is key. First, focusing on them and trying to understand them and then reviewing them as much as you can. The third one I want to offer to you is solve extra problems. And this can be done even outside of school. Uh, I was doing this when I was out in the field. I was encouraging my apprentices to do this when, when they were out of school. Uh, and even when you're in school and you're getting your technical training done, uh, think of different problems to solve with these concepts that uh, you're trying to learn or grow in more knowledge of. Fourthly, apply it to life. Get it out of that trade box and allow it to infiltrate some other areas of your life. So if you're learning some concepts in geometry, start looking at things around you in life that, that are built and, and are designed with geometry in mind. Or if you're looking at some kind of trigonometry formula, begin asking yourself questions like, how does this trigonometry formula apply in this situation or in that situation? Uh, and it may sound silly at first, but when you start doing that, you start focusing in on the concept and the application of it, and you you'll really begin to understand it at a deeper level. And then the last thing I want to suggest to you in this first five by five is go online. Okay. There's tons of stuff online that you can go in and research uh, as an instructor, as, as a vocational educator, as a facilitator. I know that I don't have all the answers and I can't pretend to. There's a whole world out there full of the internet uh, and full of what I call the Goog. And you can go on there and you can look at all different types of information. Now you have to be discerning in what you're looking at, but there's a ton of stuff out there. So go online and figure this stuff out. And I just want to take this tiny little break to highlight for us two spots on the internet that I think will really, really help you in this uh, quest to become better at numeracy. And the first one is my good friend, Chad Flynn. He's got a, a YouTube channel called The Electric Academy. You can see it here on the slide. Uh, you go to YouTube, plug in The Electric Academy. It'll take you right there. Subscribe to it. Uh, hit that bell uh, and to get notified whenever he loads up uh, videos. He's got a ton of videos there, uh, not just on numeracy, uh, but if you're an electrician apprentice especially you're gonna love this site trust me and then on 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 another site uh, another good friend of mine mark overgard has a great site dedicated to math and science for tradespeople and it's called trades tutor so if you go to youtube and just write plug in the name trades tutor it'll come up again subscribe to that hit the notification bell uh, because when he loads stuff up it's it's really, really good stuff. And again, he's got a ton of content there. You won't be disappointed. So the Electric Academy and Trades Tutor, those are two spots that I would recommend to you online. Go and check them out. Now on this last five by five piece, I wanna hit some things uh, where it becomes more practical for us to start applying some of these concepts and using them. And one of them is money. And I'm always surprised at how many times my kids cannot count out correct change. Because they, they, they've missed this idea of being able to count out like how much is a quarter, how much is a dime, how much is a nickel. I mean, they know the value of it, but when it comes to uh, figuring out change and they have to do it in their head, they're almost dead in the water. And, uh, and I, and I kind of look at the, uh, the technology of our life and say that it's, it's partially because of that. They, they haven't been forced to do that as much as I did when I was a kid. The other one is time. And, and you think, okay, well, how does numeracy apply to time? Well, start thinking of time as in decimals or even go to the military clock and begin adding and subtracting time from it. Uh, and then just even the conversions back and forth between military time and standard time or, or what I've heard some people can call metric time, but I'm not sure if that's accurate enough. Maybe you can leave some uh, comments for me below and let me know if that's accurate or not. But uh, just look at time and uh, convert back and forth. So one o'clock would be 1300 and four o'clock would be 1600. And when you're flipping back and forth like that, you're actually practicing this idea called numeracy and calculating uh, these times. 
The other big one is measurements, and this is where it really begins to hit the road for us in trades especially. Uh, I uh, have been forced to use imperial and metric measurements out in the trade. Uh, if I was working on a job that was a provincial uh, job in the sense of a government job or a federal job, or if I was on um, some kind of endowment lands for, for universities and, and, and hospitals and stuff like that, everything was in metric. So I had to learn that 25 mils was an inch. Uh, and so when they're looking, when they're telling me that this pipe is, is a hundred mils in diameter, it's really four inches. Now being able to convert back and forth between millimeters and inches, uh, is an important skill. And then the, and the fourth one I want to mention to you that we can practice in, especially is distances. And I do this all the time when I'm driving and I love to drive. Uh, but I, I'll look at the sign and I'll say, oh, okay, that take, uh, it's about 75 kilometers away. I wonder how many miles is that? What's the conversion rate? And I start kind of doing some simple math in my head and for no other reason but to keep my mind fresh uh, and to convert back and forth. Uh, so we can do it in distances or you can even say, okay, if I'm going 80 kilometers an hour and my my destination is 120 kilometers away, how many hours is it going to take me to get there or how many minutes will it take me to get there? So we can do this in distances too, even when we're driving, when we're commuting back and forth. And then the last one that I want to do, and again, it's going to sound kind of funny, but this count by doubles is fantastic. And I'm not just talking about like fives, count by fives or count by tens or count by twenties uh, because, you know, that's part of it. But count by doubles that you wouldn't normally count by, like count by threes, uh, count by sevens count by six uh, and and start looking at how these things can be applied into <laughs> quite frankly mathematical tables uh, when we start asking questions like well what's six seven times six uh, what's eight times four and and so as you begin doing these things uh, you become more comfortable with the numbers and sure enough you'll become quicker at doing these things and then as you're applying them into different contexts, taking this concept of numeracy and applying them to different contexts, you're going to get better at numeracy. So to wrap it all up, numeracy, it's not just about mathematics. Uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's about a lot of things, geometry, trigonometry, uh, distances, measurements. But there's numeracy in the trades that we have to get uh, familiar with. They're going to make us better tradespeople. Uh, but it's also this idea of calculating awareness and being able to uh, apply the concepts that we're learning uh, because there's numeracy in everyday life. Uh, we may be working on schedules. We may be working on a project schedule uh, and, and we start working into half days and quarter days or number of hours it takes to get a job done. Uh, all these things come into play. And understanding that numeracy, it's not just about numeracy, it's about literacy. And it begins to help us understand the world around us at a broader level uh, and, and really begins to open up so many doors for us. And it actually helps us to get sharper when it comes time to be more accurate and, and more on the ball when we're in our specific trade. So again, thanks, thanks for taking the time to listen and watch. Really appreciate it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell and, and give me a like if you, if you like this video. And if you have any comments about numeracy or stuff that you're struggling with, drop me a note in the comment box. We'd be more than happy to address it, maybe do a video on it for, for you. I know that if you ask it, there's probably 10 or 15 or maybe 20 other people who are thinking the very same thing. So go ahead and leave me a comment. But until then, keep practicing.